Hello everyone. Thank you for joining my presentation. I'm Kesha Singh, a research scientist at the Agriculture Agrofood Canada in Lethbridge. I will be talking about UAV based hyperspectral imaging in canola crop phenotyping. Here is an overview of my seminar. I have structured it into different points. First is the need and strategies of high throughput plant phenomics. What is the photon plant interaction, which is the biophysical parameter retrieval? What are the digital imaging platform? It can be greenhouse based setups, mobile phenocars, cars, aerial drones, or the UAVs. What are the digital imaging sensors? It can be DLSR, RGB, multi, hyperspectral, or thermal cameras, or the LIDAR sensor. What is the definition of hyperspectral imaging? What is digital imaging data integration analysis workflow? So, overall research in the follow up slide has been divided into different case studies. Here, I want to address some of the key challenges to Canadian agriculture and breeding program. First is the crop adaptation to different environment and ever changing climate, frost damage, the heat waves, hailstorm, prolonged weather, drought, and salinity. For pest disease and the weeds, the farmer have to spray the crops with different chemicals, which increase the cost of the production and poisonous in the biosphere to improve conventional crop management practices, as the traditional scouting is subjective, time consuming, and labor intensive. So, we need to find an efficient way. To combine genome, phenome, environment, and management in prediction of the key physiological traits. For some of the Western Canadian crop specific issues are in canola. Canola is one of the have the big impact in Canadian agriculture. The physical issues are the swathing stage, pod shatter, and oil seed quality. And some of the disease are club root, estrotenia, steam rot, and the frost damage. Wheat is one of the widely cultivated staple crop. Having some physical issues like stay green potential and yield estimation. And disease is the stripe of FHB and the leaf um, spot. And lentil is the, one of the biggest plant based protein. Having physical issues like plot um, maturity, selection of the ideal desiccant, and spray timing. And having series of different uh, disease associated with the lentil crop. So, hence, we need to reduce certain chemicals like pesticides and herbicides from the human food chain. So why we need high throughput plant phenotyping? As we know, the conventional crop scouting techniques are usually time consuming, labor intensive, destructive and expensive. Also, uh, there is a global market demand on automatic selection of more adaptable crop varieties in ever changing climate. Also, there is a lack of adequate phenomics data in plant breeding program. So the hypothesis set is non destructive analyze plant phenotypes in an efficient and rapid way. Hence, the high Third pool plant phenotyping can address all these points while leveraging digital imaging to link phenomics to genomics, which is the genomics selection. Here is the list of all retrieved information using digital phenotype. First is germination rate, which is the seedling emergence or the plant count, and the photosynthesis activity, which is the stomata, nutrients, and different pigments concentration. Monitoring the plant growths, such as height, canopy cover, and the volume, drought, heat, frost or cold tolerance which is water or co2 stress and also identification of plant uh, pathogens quantification early identification of pests or diseases also mapping of the crops to get the information of biomass yield and grain quality these are the strategies for crop genetic gains set by plant phenotyping and imaging research center at the university of saskatchewan so they are working in four different themes first is a mobilizing root soil microbiome interaction second is genomic and physiological selection of yield stability field phenomics for breeding and precision agronomy and last is deep learning for phenomics using the artificial intelligence based tools hence there is a sensor based uh, advances at different scale first is a greenhouse based automatic control phenotyping a uh, ground based field phenotyping using proximal sensing drone based field phenotyping which is the aerial based systems and last is satellite based crop health and precision management so there is a elite breeding germplasm and new genetic diversity after integrating all these different themes one can achieve precision agriculture deep plant phenomics and cl and climate resilient crops which gives the way of data revolution in agriculture sustainability so here how the photon plant detection generally take place so let's start with a plant so solar uh, light intensity generally fall on the different portion of the plant some is transmitted absorbed by the plant body and reflected back to the sensor so the plant generally reflect the green and near infrared photons and absorb all other color from blue to the red so here is the typical hyperspectral profile of the stress versus the healthy plants x axis is the wavelength and y axis is the typical plant reflectance in the percentage so that a healthy plant reflects less in the green 
uh, green spectrum and uh, and it starts from reflects more in the green spectrum as compared to the near infrared spectrum so here you can see how the different component of the light interact with the leaf structures and how they reflect back so by using the biochemical and biophysical parameter models we can retrieve the different pigment concentration which is the chlorophyll carotenoid anthocyanin and black pigment along with water thickness and the leaf mass per unit leaf area here is the list of all digital imaging platforms. Some of these I have worked at the University of Saskatchewan and some of those have been developed by Anne Smith Group at the AFC Lathbridge. So first is a mobile Phenovan. It has the option of on-the-go battery charging station and a desktop computer to check the field acquired imagery uh, in the real time. It also have option of storing all the phenomics equipment used in the field. And the second option is the UAV based system you can see the different hexacopters having option of multiple payload of the sensors. And this is the context fixed wing drone. And the third option is the ground based scanning system, which is the Fino cars developed by a Scott Noble group. And it has the option. It has the ability of a different sensor along with the LIDAR scanning system. And it consists of RTK based GPS antenna and real time weather station. And the Fourth system is a greenhouse based gantry setup developed by Annie Smith and Craig from the University of Lethbridge. It has a DLSR camera and multispectral sensor used in the greenhouse based plant phenomics. And the last setup, which is the growth room based setup, was developed by Annie Smith and Jonathan Nelson using Raspberry Pi 5 megapixel camera system. Here is the list of all possible digital imaging sensors. Some is at the University of Saskatchewan and some is available at the AFC Lathbridge. So first is a Raspberry Pi 5 megapixel RGB camera system. Second is a Firefly RGB camera, which is developed by Lean System in collaboration of AFC Lathbridge. It also measures the microclimate inside the greenhouse. And the third one is a Sony A7R camera. And the fourth is a multispectral MicaSense 5 band uh, camera. And there is an option of uh, different uh, hyperspectral camera for 150 bands to 200 bands. So here you can see the assembly of different camera system associated with the Fino card. First is a thermal camera, depth camera, upwilling spectrometer, radar scanning system, ultrasonic sensors, and NIR RGB 5 uh, megapixel camera system. The hyperspectral imaging is the combination of spectroscopy and imaging from a distance. Generally, the hyperspectral camera collects all the subtle information in hundreds of wavebands as shown up here. So this is the hyperspectral cube having X and Y as a spatial axis and lambda as a spectral axis. You can see the single plot hypercube. So the basic difference between multi and hyperspectral is the multispectral sensor generally collects information in a discrete manner and hyperspectral collects all the information in a continuous way. Here is the digital imagery data integration and analysis workflow. So we have divided this into two parts. One is a data processing, another is a data analysis. And the data processing, we have the hyperspectral image queue, which is going through the radiometric correction followed by georeferencing, ortho mosaicing, and plot segmentation. So it's going, it's going through the spectral calibration to extract the spectral profiles. And in the data analysis side, we need to identify the prominent optimum wavebrand, which gives the way to select the uh, vegetation indices or develop the new ones for feature extraction, followed by accuracy assessment. We need to, we have extracted the spectral uh, phenotypes. So these are the different uh, important steps in data processing and data analysis side. So here you can see the different layer of the remote sensing, soil survey and climate model and how they have stitched together to get the phenomics data in the ArcGIS. So here the phenomics pipeline development, which is the data collection protocols, image calibration and data processing, metrics and feature extraction, statistical analysis and interpretation, which gives the information about the complex phenotypic traits identification. In the first case study, we have worked with Carola seed pod maturity using UAV based hyperspectral imaging. This study was done in summer 2018. 56 genotypes of the canola was planted by AFC in AFC farm in Saskatoon. For this study, five commercially grade genotype were selected, which were NAM 0, 13, 17, 48, and 76. UAV data were collected at five phenological stages along the seed color change of 0%, 25, 40, 60, and 75%. Using on the UAV flight day, we have collected the plant for calculating the pod and seed moisture manually. Using the hyperspectral imagery data, 
we have Doppler canola pod maturity index, which is the function of blue, red age, and near infrared band. So we have plotted the pod moisture versus the canola pod maturity index and found a good square relationship of greater than 80%. Here, the, when the pod moisture is less than 30% and the, and the index value is less than 0.1, this gives an indication of canola swathing or ideal time of the harvesting to the farmers. And we have uh, we have also found as an index change attributed to the moisture and seed color change. It helped the breeders to make selection of the genotype based on the maturity and also determine proper timing of the spraying of the dead chicken. This study is recently published in the Canadian Journal of Remote Sensing. Uh, in combination of previous case study, some portion of the trial were used to estimate nitrogen use efficiency among canola genotypes. Four varieties, including NAM and hybrid genotypes, were seeded in Canadian Research Farm in Saskatoon in summer 2018. Four nitrogen doses were applied in the soil. Here, we can see how the nitrogen fertilizer flows from the soil to the plant and in the atmosphere. The UV hyperspiral data were collected at different time points to measure the treatment effect. This is an average reflectant profile per plot from different nitrogen treatment. The Nitrogen reflected index were used to classify the field imagery data to identify different doses effect on canola genotypes. The overall study could help the growers to gauge how much nitrogen they should be applying per acre to optimize the final grain yield. This study was done in collaboration with a local company at the University of Saskatchewan in Canada in 2020. And the research objective was shorting canola genotype based on the maturity timing in the field. And the trial was located in the Saskatchewan, Canada. It was seeded by the company in June 3rd, 2020 and desiccated in September 4th, 2020. And the ground measurement was, uh, was with the maturity rating uh, using the seed color change in August 28th, 2020. And the seed moisture was measured in the September 11th, 2020. And UAV based hyperspectral remote sensing data was, um, was acquired between the uh, five uh, BBCS stages between the stage 1 and stage 5. BBCS stage 79 is corresponding to when the all pods have reached to the final size and the BBCS stage 89 and 88 is when 80% or more pod are at the maturity stage. So here you can see the full trial map and it was uh, seeded with the 315 canola genotypes, 80 ranges and 76 rows and, the, and it was in the RCBD design and the UAB based hyperspectral uh, imaging data was collected by using a hyperspectral camera, which is the 400 to 1000 nanometer in the spectral range, having number of bands 150 and the spectral resolution of 2 to 4 nanometers. So the full acquire data was acquired using the hyperspectral camera and uh, data was extracted using the different um, software. So here you can see the extracted spectral profile of the selected randomly selected uh, uh, nine genotypes. It has a blind uh, names you can see on the, at the top. And you can see how the spectral profile is varying at the different BBC stages from 79 to 89. So here is the next uh, nine uh, randomly selected genotypes. And you can see how the spectral profile is here is varying between the different BBC stages to 79 to the 89. So, so here for the performance analytics, choreogram of the variables of between the different components are calculated. So here the first component is the seed moisture and the Second component is the date to the maturity. And the third component is the canola pod maturity index, which is the decay of the slope calculated. And the, and the fourth component is the BBC stage 79, to the BBC stage 89. So here you can see the distribution of each variable diagonally. And here, the, how, how they have correlated with each other as a significant p-value. The, the canola pod maturity index was used by, so for shorting the genotypes. And the canola pod maturity maturity uh, recently developed and present and published in an article in the Canadian Journal of Remote Sensing. And here you can see the same context was used in the pheno, pheno stages and and how the canola pod maturity values is varying at the different these stages. And and slope of these canola pod maturity index of different uh, genotypes lines are calculated and plotted with respect to the 18 randomly selected genotypes. So hence the CPMI falling below 0.12, which shows the seed moisture it should be below 35% as, as in, in the previous study. And the CPMI calculated slope conveys the how quickly any genotypes matures. It means the slope with the greater absolute value is steeper than the other. Uh, in this slide, I would like to acknowledge other funding agencies listed here.
now i have finished my presentation thank you everyone for your time